Welcome to my happiness store. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're delving into one of life's most intriguing questions. What is happiness? This simple yet profound question has intrigued philosophers, psychologists, and the ordinary folk alike for centuries. Is it a fleeting moment of joy, a state of contentment, or perhaps it's a journey, not a destination? The interpretations are as diverse as humanity itself. Join me as we explore this elusive yet essential aspect of human experience. Start by asking yourself, what does happiness mean to you? This simple question might be harder to answer than you'd think. Is it a sunny afternoon spent reading your favorite book? The feeling of triumph after conquering a challenging hike? Or perhaps the satisfaction of a home-cooked meal shared with friends? For some, happiness is a sense of achievement, the fruition of hard work and perseverance. It's the culmination of countless hours poured into a project, the final brushstroke on a canvas, the last sentence of a novel. It's standing on the podium, holding the trophy high, knowing that you've earned this moment of glory. Others find happiness in the quiet, ordinary moments. The first sip of coffee in the morning, the crunch of autumn leaves beneath their feet, or the soft purr of a cat curled up on their lap. For these folks, happiness isn't about grand accomplishments or major milestones, but rather the small, everyday pleasures that bring a smile to their face. And then there are those who equate happiness with love and connection. A warm hug from a loved one, a heartfelt conversation with a friend, or even the simple act of holding hands. These moments of intimacy, of shared vulnerability and mutual understanding, bring a sense of contentment that's hard to describe but impossible to forget. Happiness can also be found in the pursuit of personal growth and self-improvement. It's the thrill of learning something new, the satisfaction of overcoming a personal challenge, or the pride that comes with mastering a new skill. For these individuals, happiness is a journey, not a destination. As we can see, happiness means something different to each of us. It's as unique as our fingerprints, shaped by our personal experiences, values, and aspirations. It's a complex tapestry woven from threads of joy, contentment, love, achievement, growth, and so much more. So what does happiness mean to you? Ponder on this question. Your answer might surprise you, and it could be the first step towards understanding and embracing your own unique version of happiness. After all, as we've seen, happiness means something different to each of us. Beyond these individual interpretations, what does science have to say about happiness? It's a fascinating question and one that researchers have been probing for decades. The science of happiness, or positive psychology as it's formally known, has revealed some intriguing insights into our quest for contentment. Let's start with a key concept, subjective well-being. This term refers to how people evaluate their own lives. It's a blend of cognitive judgments like how satisfied you are with your life overall, and emotional responses, such as how often you feel joy, gratitude, and other positive emotions versus negative ones like sadness or stress. But here's the interesting part. Subjective well-being isn't just about feeling good all the time. It's about experiencing a rich variety of emotions, even the challenging ones, and knowing how to manage them effectively. It's about being engaged and connected, finding purpose in your actions, and having a sense of mastery over your life. Another fascinating finding is the hedonic treadmill theory. This suggests that we all have a baseline level of happiness that we return to, regardless of the ups and downs in our lives. Win the lottery or lose your job, and you'll likely return to your happiness set point eventually. Then there's the role of genetics. Studies suggest that about 50% of our happiness is determined by our genes. But that doesn't mean we're stuck with a fixed happiness quota. The remaining half is influenced by our behaviors, attitudes, and circumstances, which we can consciously shape and control. Finally, we have the broaden and build theory. This proposes that positive emotions broaden our awareness and encourage us to explore, learn, build skills, and form social connections. Over time, these resources build up, creating an upward spiral of well-being. It's important to note that happiness is not just the absence of negativity. It's a complex and multifaceted experience. Our understanding of happiness is continually evolving, and these scientific insights are just the tip of the iceberg. As we continue to explore this captivating subject, we'll uncover even more about the art and science of being happy. So how can we cultivate happiness in our own lives? Let's imagine happiness as a garden. Just like a garden, it does not spontaneously bloom overnight. It requires patience, care, and a little bit of daily work. 
And while there might be external factors beyond our control, like the whims of weather, there are many things within our control that make the garden of happiness thrive. Firstly, we must plant the right seeds. In the context of happiness, these seeds are our thoughts and actions. One such seed is gratitude. By maintaining a gratitude journal, acknowledging the good in our lives, we water the seeds of positivity. It's a simple act, yet profoundly transformative. It shifts our focus from what's missing in our lives to what we already have, making us realize that we have more than we think. Another seed is mindfulness. Mindfulness is about being present, about living in the here and now. When we meditate, we make space for silence and stillness, allowing ourselves to just be. This practice cultivates awareness and acceptance, helping us navigate life's ups and downs with grace and equanimity. Acts of kindness, too, are important seeds. When we help others, we not only make their day a little brighter, but we also boost our own happiness. It's a win-win situation. Kindness connects us with others, fostering a sense of community and belonging. Now let's talk about the soil. The soil represents our lifestyle and habits. Healthy habits like regular exercise, a balanced diet, and ample sleep provide the right environment for the seeds of happiness to grow. Nurturing positive relationships is like the sunshine that brightens our garden. Our connections with family, friends, and community are vital sources of joy and support. Next, we need to tend to our garden, pulling out the weeds that might hinder growth. These weeds could be negative thoughts, toxic relationships, or unhealthy habits. We must be vigilant in recognizing and removing these obstacles to our happiness. And finally, just as a garden requires patience, so does cultivating happiness. It's not an overnight process. It's a journey filled with moments of joy and challenges. But every step, every day, brings us closer to a more fulfilling and joyful life. By nurturing positive relationships, finding meaning and purpose, and taking care of our physical and mental health, we can create a more fulfilling and joyful life. Remember, happiness is not a destination, but a way of traveling. It's about finding joy in the journey, about cultivating a garden where happiness can flourish. So, let's start today. Let's plant the seeds, enrich the soil, and tend to our garden. Let's cultivate happiness. So, how can we cultivate happiness in our own lives? By nurturing positive relationships, finding meaning and purpose, and taking care of our physical and mental health, we can create a more fulfilling and joyful life. In conclusion, happiness is a deeply personal and subjective experience that encompasses feelings of joy, contentment, and fulfillment. There's no one-size-fits-all definition, as happiness varies from person to person, shaped by our unique perspectives, values, and experiences. Some find it in the simple pleasures of life, others in profound moments of achievement, and still others in the peace and tranquility of solitude. We've seen how happiness extends beyond the surface level of fleeting pleasure, digging deeper into the realm of subjective well-being. This concept, embraced by researchers across the globe, underscores the idea that happiness isn't just about feeling good all the time. It's about feeling contentment and satisfaction with life, experiencing more positive emotions than negative ones, and finding a sense of purpose and meaning. What's more, the pursuit of happiness isn't tied solely to external factors like wealth or success. While these can bring temporary joy, they often fall short of providing lasting happiness. The key, it seems, lies within us, in our attitudes, our habits, and our decisions. It's found in the way we perceive the world, how we react to life's ups and downs, and how we choose to live each day. We've also explored various practices that can help cultivate happiness in our lives. The act of writing down what we're grateful for, for instance, can shift our focus from what's wrong in our lives to what's right, fostering a sense of contentment. Mindfulness, the practice of being fully present and engaged in the moment, can enhance our appreciation of life's everyday joys. Acts of kindness, big and small, can boost our mood and create a sense of connectedness with others. Cultivating positive relationships is another crucial aspect of happiness. Our connections with others, family, friends, colleagues, and even strangers, can offer support, enrich our lives, and contribute to our sense of belonging. And of course, living authentically, being true to ourselves, expressing our feelings honestly, and honoring our values can lead to a deeper sense of fulfillment and happiness. In essence, happiness is not a destination, but a journey. It's not about being in a constant state of joy, but about finding contentment in the ebb and flow of life. It's about embracing the good times, learning from the tough times, and finding peace in the quiet moments. 
By embracing these practices, we can unlock the true essence of happiness in our lives. 